Hi, welcome to InfoMedia's presentation of Optimize Your E-Commerce Site. Um, how to optimize for holiday sales, shipping, and traffic. Um, I'm so glad to um, be presenting this. I think this is a training that often we give toward the end of the year, and really I think it's something to start thinking about very early in the year. So I'm really happy that we can do it so that whenever you're ready to start thinking about the holidays and thinking about optimizing your site um, and making your e-commerce business successful, Whenever you're ready to start, you can watch this um, and get started, or watch it and make a list for how to get started later. So, speaking of getting started, um, all right. Uh, so, I want to talk today about basically how to make an e commerce plan without losing your mind. Um, I used to be a retailer, so I understand that it is very easy to get really stressed out, especially around the holidays. So one of the focuses of what we're going to talk about today is not only how to make an e-commerce plan, but also how to make it work for you when you're also, you know, running around, probably if you have a brick and mortar store, you're trying to get, you know, the sales out, trying to help customers, you're probably trying to wrap presents. Um, everything else that needs to be done around the holidays is kind of amped up for retailers. So how do you, I, I wanted to present this in a way that's really doable, even when you have all that stuff going on which the first step in making it doable is to plan ahead. So um, good news, you're watching this, you're planning ahead. That's so wonderful. Um, and as you're watching, just know you can access these slides anytime on SlideShare. Just go to slideshare.net slash infomedia.com with the dot com spelled out. Um, and then you can see the slides. So what that's good for is if you wanna watch this presentation and take notes, fantastic. Um, that would be wonderful. But if you don't want to take notes and you just want to sit back, have a cup of coffee with me, um, and enjoy it, well, that's great. Uh, you can do that, and you can access all the information later. Um, all right, so let's see where we begin. Oh, yeah, who am I? Uh, oh, that's fine. Here is me. And then there's me. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of fun with the holidays. I'm kind of one of those Christmas nerds. Um, I'm not uh, as extreme as some people, but I'm pretty extreme. So um, sorry, not sorry about all the, you know, Christmas cheer that's going to be all through this. Um, and as far as we're talking about retail, I, I'm going to be talking a lot about Christmas. That's not to say it's the only holiday you should pay attention to. I think it's a really good idea to pay attention to others, um, especially Hanukkah. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, obviously, Christmas is, it's well, maybe not obviously. It's important to me for a lot of reasons. It's important to me personally, um, as far as, you know, the meaning of Christmas. There's also, you know, I think it's a lot of fun personally. But today we're actually talking about Christmas and the holidays as it relates to your store. So it's going to be kind of that cold calculating, um, let's make money with the holidays. Um, so bear with me a little. That's not all there is to the holidays, but that's what we're talking about today. So it might seem a little like that. And in light of that, Christmas is the biggest driver for retail. So when I talk about that, it doesn't mean there aren't other holidays that are just as important. And you might even make a lot of sales on other holidays. So that's important to look at. But when we talk about it today, we're just going to be using Christmas sometimes as a shorthand. So just so we know. Anyway, okay, who am I? Uh, my name is Carrie Rollwagon, and I'm the communications director here at InfoMedia. Uh, if you stumbled on this webinar, it's brought to you by InfoMedia. We're a web development company in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, so the reason that I was chosen to give this talk partly is because um, I run marketing for a lot of small businesses, including InfoMedia. It's not too small of a business, but um, so I, I do some marketing work with a lot of people. But I also used to run my own retail store. So Several years ago, I um, co-founded Church Street Coffee and Books, which is a bookstore and coffee shop in Birmingham, Alabama, also. Um, and I've since sold the store, but I ran it for, I think, about five Christmases. So um, I know what you're going through <laughs> if you're a retailer. So I might use some examples from my store as shorthand. 
Now, if you're thinking, I don't have a brick and mortar store, will this have things for me too? Absolutely. Um, so it's really geared toward both if you sell e-commerce or if you have a brick and mortar store. So uh, let's get started. That's who I am. And that's a really silly picture of me. Very uh, Christmassy. Okay. Um, all right. So first of all, let's look at some key dates. These are the dates for 2017. Please double check me always. Um, I checked it. I made the list and checked it twice, but it won't hurt for you to also check it. Um, so these are the dates for 2017. Um, I would just make this list and kind of fill them out at the beginning of the year, whatever the year is. So, and this is what you'll want to pay attention to when you're developing your e-commerce strategy. One is Thanksgiving. This kind of kicks off the Christmas season. Um, and this is always on a Thursday, obviously. This year, it's going to be November 23rd, which is the birthday of one of my favorite people, my sister. Um, <laughs> it's not relevant to the webinar. Um, but so that's Thanksgiving. And that's the day that, as we all know, kicks off a lot of the retail season because the next day is Black Friday. Um, the reason Black Friday is important, first of all, we know that it's important at, in a brick and mortar perspective. Um, it's also becoming a lot more important as uh, a web holiday, too. So you'll see on this list, I still have Cyber Monday because that hasn't totally disappeared. But last year, in 2016 especially, a lot more companies were doing online Black Friday sales instead of or in addition to their Cyber Monday sales. There were tons of articles last year about how Cyber Monday is dead. It's all about Black Friday. Um, that may or may not be true. but just think about what makes sense for your business. You want to make, you might want to do the sales all that entire weekend. You might want to do different sales and see which ones perform so that you know what to do in the future. Or you might just want to pick one or the other. Or you might say, you know what, I have a brick and mortar. I'm going to really concentrate on Black Friday there, and I'm not going to really do anything online. Whatever you decide is okay, just think about it and kind of research for yourself which one you think is more important. So we have Black Friday. Then Small Business Saturday. This is the day after Black Friday. Um, this is, I think, uh, American Express calls it Shop Small Saturday. This is a day where a lot of people are pushing for small businesses to have their own kind of Black Friday type of event. Um, you can have varying degrees of success. As a small business owner, former small business owner, I would say that it was more successful when we got a lot of the other stores in our community involved. So if you can do that, that's fantastic. Also check out what American Express has. They usually have some kind of deal for cardholders. It varies every year. Sometimes they give you $50 back if you bought for every you know, $50 you spend in small shops. Sometimes it's way less impressive than that. Just check out what they have this year. I'm not sure they've announced it yet. You can also sign up through American Express to get, they usually give a lot of swag for free. So you can get like shop small doormats, shop small uh, credit card, um, receipt. What do you call those things? The thing you put the receipt and then you're just like cha-ching or whatever. You don't say cha-ching. You get what I'm talking about, right? Carbon transfer things. We're spending too much time on this. The point is um, you can figure out some ways to, uh, promote Shop Small Saturday if you take American Express. If you don't, um, you can promote it on your own. I think uh, just check into it, Google it. It's, it is a fun way to get your customers excited about shopping small. Um, again, Cyber Monday comes the next day. This year, Hanukkah is gonna fall from December 12th to December 20th. Again, I would say, I like what we used to do in our shop is we mostly decorated for Christmas, but we'd also wrap for Hanukkah. And I will say, as far as our customers, they tended to really appreciate the fact that we would wrap for either one. It was pretty easy. We just basically had to get a, some blue ribbons in addition to some red and green ones. If there are ways to involve your, your customers who are celebrating other holidays other than Christmas, you don't necessarily have to celebrate, you don't necessarily have to decorate in every single thing. Pick whatever you think that your customers are gonna like the best that you are really personally celebrating, that's okay. But having those options and thinking through those options, like having an e-commerce option that you can maybe select a Hanukkah wrapping is, is a good idea, that's good for business. All right, 
figure out for your own shipping. I'm not even going to try to touch this one, but, but talk to your shipping partners and see when is the last day for Christmas shipping regular and which was the last day for overnight. Be very, very careful about getting the right days because uh, definitely you don't want to mess up the delivery of a Christmas present. People really don't like it. Um, okay. And then, of course, Christmas, which is on a Monday this year, which can be positive and negative. Um, mostly positive, you have a big, you have an entire weekend before so that the, the big buying can really happen in that solid weekend. So that's exciting for us as retailers. Um, oh, and I included some pictures the whole way of some decorations that we had at Church Street. Um, of course, I, this was our, we made them our first year. So my family and I all like, handmade all these decorations, like little elves went in on Thanksgiving and put them all up and, um, you know, your typical small business story. So I'm kind of proud of them. So there's some pictures in here. Um, okay. So let's talk about, um, prepping your site. Okay. So you have your website. How do you make sure that you're set for Christmas? First of all, make sure your site can handle the increased traffic. Um, there is a gift last year that I wanted uh, to send my mom. I thought this is something this is something we're both interested in. We both share share this. It's like twelve dollars. This might be a perfect gift for her to give me. So I was gonna send it to her as an idea, but I couldn't because the site was down because they'd gotten a lot of um, basically just too much traffic. So make sure your site can handle that. Um, make sure your site loads quickly. People are pretty impatient, especially around the holidays. So you can do a speed test on your site. Um, just Google speed test and you can, you can run that. If you have images that are too large or you have a video that's trying to play for too long and it's taking a long time to load on people's computers or phones, that's gonna be a problem. Make sure your site is responsive. That just means that it performs well on a mobile device and on a computer. So many people are using the internet and buying through their computers now, or through their computers through their phones and mobile devices. So just make sure you're pulling your site up on a phone and going through the same checklists that you would go through on you know, your laptop and make sure all that functionality is still there. Make sure people can easily browse your catalog. Make sure people can easily order from you, that all of that stuff is functional on mobile as well. If you have a good responsive site, it should automatically respond to that change in size but you'll want to test it out just to be sure. And then freshen up your content. Make sure your blog, your about page, your bios, your address and phone number, these things are up to date. People might be visiting you to go to your online store and you or to go to your brick and mortar store and you definitely want to make sure your address and all of that is correct. Okay. Um, you want to test your contact form. Um, okay, so I'm back now. Uh, sorry, that was really weird. Um, we had something happen in the office here, and I was like, what is going on? I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but um, after uh, a lot of running around, uh, we sorted it out, and <laughs> I'm back. So sorry about the, the pause and if that was weird, I don't know how weird it was. So anyway, <laughs> let's resume. Uh, so speaking of problems, we all know that we can have issues with our site at any time. We can have issues with our webinars at any time. So <laughs> to prevent this from happening as much as possible, you wanna test your site beforehand. So you don't wanna find out after you find, as after a customer finally tells you, I tried to buy from you but I couldn't because your form wasn't working. Um, and then how many other sales have you lost from people who didn't tell you, you know? So you wanna make sure you test all this stuff first. So test your contact form so you're sure that if people um, need something from you, have a question, want a um, different kind of gift wrap or whatever, they can get in contact with you. Have somebody actually put their information into the contact form and send it and make sure that the person who's supposed to be getting that contact form, it's going to the right email, they know how to respond, just make sure all that stuff is working. Again, test all the links on your site and your contact info. Just actually click on those links, see where they go, test your customer experience as thoroughly as you can. You also wanna Google yourself. 
If people are walking into your brick and mortar or hearing about your store for the first time, that's probably the first step they're gonna do. So you wanna know what are you they gonna see? Now, if you Google your shop because you go there a lot or you go to your website a lot, it's probably gonna be near the top of the Google search. What you can do is open an incognito window. Depending on your browser, it's gonna be a little different. Um, but just search those menus at the top when you're Googling and you can, uh, you can usually figure out a way to open a different, uh, I think it's like incognito, I think is what Chrome calls it. Um, Firefox calls it something different. Anyway, you can find this pretty easily. That'll open up a window that's not taking your search history into account. So you can really see like where your business is showing up. Um, so if you're not showing up at all, or if you're showing up on like the second or third page of search results for when you're looking for your specific business in your town, um, you'll want to contact Google Local or contact us at InfoMedia, and we can basically kind of correct that. Um, of course, that doesn't mean you're going to come to the very top in search results. We would love it uh, if you did. <laughs> I'm sure you would love it too. But if you think there's a problem and you're not coming up where you should, talk to us. There are a lot of ways we can address that. There are ways that Google can also help you address it. Um, also, you want to add products to your site. Make sure that process is working for one thing. Like if you're, if it's the beginning of the year and you're trying to get set up for the end of the year, just test and make sure you can add products, and that is good. You might want to make sure. And if it's closer, you all want to actually add that stock. Um, if it's earlier in the year and that you're planning way ahead, add calendar alerts for the times that you need to be starting to add that stuff. Make sure that you're getting photography taken care of for those, um, that you're having descriptions written for those. This is all stuff that you can do pretty far ahead of time that will save you so much headache at the time. But say you did wait and it is the time, that's fine. Just put a Christmas movie on TV or put something else that's totally not Christmas if you're already sick of it, and <laughs> just start loading these things up. But make sure the seasonal items are in your site so people can buy them. Okay, you'll also want to prep for shipping. Again, you definitely don't want somebody to want something from you and have the orders um, have trouble being fulfilled. So a lot of times, if you have an e-commerce site that does orders maybe a little less frequently than other than you know say Amazon um, <laughs> maybe sometimes those shipping processes aren't just that uh, you know perfectly oiled machine maybe you get an order and sometimes it takes you a couple days to even see it or a couple of days to make sure it's actually getting packaged shipped out etc you want to speed that up basically address that process see what you need to make where you need to make changes to make that process run a lot better um, you want to also obviously prepare for increased customer service demands. Maybe at your shop right now you're really slow most of the time, so getting those orders out isn't the problem. Isn't a problem because you just have whoever you have on the floor packaging them up. But what happens if your brick and mortar gets really busy and then that piece is falling out? Just address all of those things. Make sure the logistics are in place to get shipping taken care of quickly and uh, in an organized way, so you're just absolutely sure that every order that comes in, you're getting out. You'll also wanna update your shipping and return policies. You can think about free shipping. A lot of people are offering free shipping. Not everybody is, so you don't have to do it, but just make sure these are where you, these are exactly how you want them to be. You know, you don't wanna have free shipping turned on when you really haven't addressed that in your pricing model. Because, you know, during the year, that might mean 10 orders and you can kind of just eat the cost. But if that's multiplied to be 100 orders over the Christmas season, that may not be a cost that you want to eat. So just make sure that those are set up exactly how you want them. Also, make sure those policies are clearly defined and listed in several places. Now, of course, most people are going to be really attracted to uh, free shipping if you offer that. They're gonna be really attracted to a lenient return policy. That's great, but a lot of us can't handle that. Like it's just too much on, of a burden on our stores. You don't have to offer that. You can offer a strict return policy. You can say, you know, within 30 days and you have to have, you know, it has to be on the credit card that, you know, whatever it is. Um, you can have a strict policy. Now I would, it, in my opinion, I think it's worth maybe looking at that a little bit more for Christmas. You give them more like two months so that if it's a gift and they bought it December 1st, 
that person who receives the gift also has a month to return it. But again, you may not want to do that. Whatever you decide, just make sure it's clear. If you're clear with people that, you know, this is a gift, you'll have a gift receipt, but they have to return it quickly, and you're clear in several different places, you'll save yourself a lot of grief later on when somebody who gets a Christmas present comes back in April and can't return it and gets really mad about it. You don't want that. You want it to be very clear. Okay. Um, so let's be a little more positive. <laughs> uh, shipping isn't the most fun thing because even I feel like I get stressed out even thinking about it. But again, the more processes you have in place, the more you think about it ahead of time, the better it will go. Well, how do you incentivize buying so that all of this is worth it? Um, one way is to create discounts. Again, you know, we saw all of those things at the beginning, Cyber Monday, Black Friday, Shop Small Saturday, etc. You know, at Christmas, everybody is competing for those same sales. So discounts can be a way to do it. But it's not the only way. You can create coupon codes so that you're selling the kind of things that you want, or you're maybe selling to people who've already purchased something. Maybe they get a coupon code when, you know, maybe they buy something early, they had a coupon code for, you know, buy more presents and save more money kind of thing. Consider free shipping and decide if discounts can be stacked. Now this is important, so say you say, oh, it's site-wide, it's 10% off, and then you had a coupon code that's out there that will help them save 20%. Now can they use those together to save 30%? Well, that's up to you, but just make sure you're clear on the coupon, make sure you're clear on the site about what the restrictions are so that people don't try, either stack them when you didn't intend on it, on them to say, on that, uh, or you don't want them to think that they can stack those things and then be angry when they can't. Okay, so make your sales fun. The reason to make your sales fun partially is it actually gets your staff on board more. It, it makes your customers kind of excited about your product again, but also it's a really good way to share on social media. So if you can make the sale something fun, then you can kind of take pictures, use fun messaging and things like that, and come up, be able to share about the sale over and over and over. For example, if you had 12 days of savings, well, you're gonna talk about that for 12 different days. Maybe you'll highlight 12 different products, maybe more. Um, but that allows you to keep talking about it, but to also change the message so people aren't just really bored by it. Um, you can do percent off purchase, repeat buyer, a two for one bundle, free shipping, a BOGO, a free gift, you can read all of these. Um, you could have like a word of the day if they put in the coupon code, like Jingle Bells or whatever, so that they need to, they, that it benefits them to follow you on social media because that's the way they'll get the word of the day and they can fill that in for savings. There are so many ideas. Obviously, you can just Google like sale ideas, look for the ones that are attractive to you that you think I can do this. My staff can promote this, we can promote it online, and my customers will really like it. You don't have to do a bunch of sales. Do the ones that feel right to you. In fact, I wouldn't recommend doing a ton of sales because at some point it's gonna be white noise. Um, so just pick the ones that seem the best for you. Okay, we know that when we have, when it's a time for the holidays at the store, we decorate a brick and mortar store for the holidays. You know, people also like to complain about this. When we had the shop, people, a, f a few people would go on Twitter and say, oh, I wish there was something other than Christmas music and, you know, there are just Christmas things everywhere. And what I want to want to say is, you know why there are Christmas things everywhere? It's because when those decorations are up and when that music is playing, my sales go up. So that's why <laughs> I'm going to do it. So although I care about all of my customers, the one guy that sits at the table and drinks refills on a black coffee for five hours is just really um, not as important, not as financially important at Christmas as the woman who gets really excited about Christmas music or um, the guy that comes in and remembers like, oh yeah, I have to do my shopping and they spend a lot of money. So that's what I want. So anyway, we all know that decorating our stores for the holidays makes people remember, oh yeah, I have stuff to buy, it increases sales. And it can be really fun. In the same way, you can decorate your site. Now you're not gonna put probably snowflakes and jingle bells and ornaments all over your site. It's gonna look tacky. And honestly, it's a lot, it's fairly expensive to do and it can be, um, 
it, it just maybe it isn't worth it. But you can use a banner, and your banner could be holiday themed. So you're still getting that, and you're not paying for a lot of new site development for it. You can change their calls to action so that they're a little bit holiday themed, maybe. Again, check your calls to action, make sure they're linking and going the same to the same place. And you can get a lot of traction out of just updating your featured products. So making sure, maybe you don't want to change anything about your site, but then the, maybe you spotlight four products on your homepage, and those, those pictures and those products are holiday themed. Well, that's going to give a holiday feel to your whole site, and that can, can do that for you. Okay, so you want to get the base of your site taken care of. You want to make sure that um, all these, uh, these sales are, are ready, your shipping is ready, everything is set up. Now, how do you make sure people actually know about this? One way is to include, is to do blogs. The reason to do a blog is that you're getting fresh content out there all the time, and you can use that blog to link on social media. So on social media, you just put a fun picture, you put just a little bit about the sale, and then you have all the details, maybe some of the disclaimers and that kind of thing on the blog. So blog ideas are great. Another reason to do blog ideas is you can come up with these lists, like I have ideas here, hostess gifts, gifts for moms, stocking stuffers, that kind of thing. What a list does, first of all, a lot of people use these lists for shopping. I know I do. I look at, you know, my sister's a runner, so I will um, look up best gifts for runners, and I get a lot of ideas that way. So if you can come up with a, a unique gift idea list and people search for it, that can bring actually new customers in. Also, it can make your current customers realize maybe, you know, maybe somebody shopped at my bookstore because they really like the novels that I recommend. But they might have not have thought about the fact that we sell a lot of like Lego books and coloring books and stuff for kids as well. Well, if I did a roundup and they saw it on the blog, they might realize, hey, I didn't even realize they had all this other stuff. I can do a lot of my holiday shopping here. So this is a way to let people know that that stuff exists. It's also a way to pull in some of your current inventory and kind of uh, uh, combine it with the holiday stuff, with the stuff that's festive. You might have a list of stocking stuffers. Maybe three of them are really holiday themed. Maybe four of them are bestsellers. And wait, did I say, yeah, I have three left, right? <laughs> Hopefully, I'm bad at doing math on camera. Um, and maybe the other three, frankly, are just things that you have extra product of and might make good stocking stuffers, but you also just want to move the product. And so you, you can kind of use this to like uh, address some of your back stock, your back inventory. Okay, so um, how do you promote this? Once you know you have it, you've written the blogs, you're ready to go. How do you put it out there? Um, one is use your email list. So if you don't have an email list, I would start trying to compile one now if you can. This is depending on your business. If it's awkward, you don't, like if you're feeling like this is gonna drive away, people away, having them add the email, you don't have to. But a lot of companies do this now. Just at the register, they just ask for an email. Some people, you know, when they have you in the computer to get your discounts and stuff, that's how they track you. They just ask for your email to put you in. That way they have it and they can send you an email later. Um, so communicate to that list about your sales and discounts. Uh, use social media. Just put stuff out on social media really fairly regularly. Don't, don't use these same pictures. Don't use the exact same message, but change it up a little bit. Make it fun and make sure you are continually talking to people through your social media. Um, also, use your in-store signage. If you have special deals going on your website, or if you want people to remember, you know, come to the store, but also if you don't feel like getting out next week, we can still have this. Maybe people can order through your website for in-store pickup. If they can do that, certainly make sure that you have um, those signs up and let your staff know what's going on with your website too. A lot of times we forget that those person-to-person -person connections, um, connecting people to our website, it, like in our brick and mortar can actually be really a fantastic way to get them there. Um, and again, make stuff fun. Uh, a lot of people actually love this whole Christmas thing. So embrace that, make it fun, make them want to shop with you. Okay. So, um, get set up for Cyber Monday. 
Uh, how do we do this? And again, I'm going to say Cyber Monday here. Um, I'm still going to just leave it like this, but you know, you might be highlighting Black Friday the same way. So if you if that's what you're doing, just be sure to translate these same things. Okay, again, decide on promotions, discounts, and specials. But I would say on one of these things, decide on one key offer. You're kind of going to kind of going to be blasting this, but so you might say again. 20% off the whole store, or you might have one product you know people are really going to want, or you might have some back stock you want to get rid of, so you're like a free such and such, which every purchase of whatever. Um, whatever it is, don't make it too confusing. You essentially have basically one day for people to latch onto this, so you don't want to try to give them so many offers that they just like don't get it and end up going somewhere else. You might want to come up with a specific landing page for this. So you can talk to us at Infomedia if you want to look into this. Essentially, you might say, I want to know how, I want to know how well this stuff is, how well my promotions are going so that I know if this is worth it for next year. How do you know that? Well, analytics can tell you a little bit about who's coming from where, but you may not know if this is your Facebook Black Friday post or if another post brought them to your website. If you want to know specifically did this ad campaign that I did for Cyber Monday or Black Friday, did this have the impact that is worth doing later? One way to do that is to have a specific landing page on your site so that you're directing all your traffic there. And the customer in, it doesn't have to actually look that different or it might even redirect them. But on your end, next year, you'll be able to track that information to see if it's worth it to do it again. Hope that is making sense. Um, again, established term, terms like can discounts be used together? How are returns going to work? You might have a special deal for that day. You might not. Whatever it is, just make it clear. And start promotions. Start promotions, I would say, even a month early. A lot of people, when they're prepping for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, are planning this stuff. Like they're making lists, they're seeing where they can get the best deals. So make sure they have the information when they're planning. And you really want to get this set up on your website early. You really, I promise you don't want to be spending your Thanksgiving day trying to get banners up on your website. Unfortunately, something will go wrong. That's how it always works. So especially if you wait for the last minute for some reason. Okay. Um, so again, promote your specials basically in every way that you can. Make sure you fulfill your orders in a timely way. Here's the good thing about Black Friday and Cyber Monday people still have an opportunity to buy from you again before Christmas. So you can use this as a great opportunity for upselling. So say you have a team ready to get those, those Cyber Monday or those Black Friday orders. Say you turn them around really fast. You get in there, get them all packaged up. Maybe you even put a coupon saying, you know, for 10% off your next order or free shipping on your next order or whatever. Make sure you set it up on your website to actually function if you do that. But you could do that. You could put a little note in there, you know, anything like that. They're going to remember that. They're going to, re you know, people remember when things arrive really quickly. And then they're going to think about you the next month as they're buying more presents. If the more positive you can make that experience of that delivery after your Cyber Monday or your Black Friday, the better your chances of getting them to buy again. And we all know if they've bought twice, in a month and a half, um, you're probably gonna keep them as a customer. So this can be a really great opportunity to build customer loyalty. Um, all right, again, sell, you can sell, basically use it as an opportunity for continuing sales. And remember to shut down those coupon code offers at the end of the day. A lot of times you can set them up with an expiration. If you're an InfoMedia customer, just let us know and we'll help you do that. But if it's something that you have to do manually, remember to turn it off. <laughs> or don't, but know that people are going to get things for cheaper because of that. And maybe that's fine. If it's not, turn it off. <laughs> okay, so after Christmas. You just want to collapse, right? <laughs> like, it's so exhausting to run a retail store over Christmas. And if it's e-commerce, it's really not different. You're still stressed out. You're trying to get out those sales. You're packaging that stuff up. It's very exhausting. So you definitely want to relax. 
engage in some self-care. Um, but there are some things you need to do to uh, prep your website as well for the new year. One is take down those decorations. If you have a banner or whatever you have, make sure if you've changed your call to action to be holiday themes, make sure to change it back. The best way to do this is just to make a list of what you do in the first place so that you can be sure to undo it after all of that is over. Um, also pay attention to reviews and comments. This is pretty important. There are people who have been exposed to your business and your website through the holidays that have never known about you before. They're pro a lot of them are probably gonna be leave reviews and comments. You wanna address them. It's a good idea, if it's a positive comment, you don't necessarily have to say anything. It's nice to say thank you or something like that. If it's a negative comment, that it's difficult. You know, you just put your heart and soul on the line and your body because you're exhausted, and then you get somebody who's mad because they had to wait like 10 minutes more in line or something. Um, <laughs> so make sure you're Googling, finding these comments. If it's a negative comment, definitely respond. Don't try to explain it away. Most of the people who leave negative comments online are just gonna be mad. Like, you're not gonna talk them out of being mad. They're probably not gonna see things your way. They're not gonna realize that they were wrong. But you're not even really talking to that person. You're making sure that the next person who stumbles on that bad review sees the bad review, and they, then they see your well-reasoned response. You know, at the shop, I used to say, like, I'm so sorry that you had that experience, we'd love to make it right, let us know how we can do it, or come in for a free cookie or something like that. Like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry your coffee order was wrong, like have their next one on us, something like that. It's not giving away a ton, it's not really taking on so much responsibility, but it's at least trying to fix it, or at least acknowledging we're so sorry you had that experience, we really, this isn't typical for our customers, um, thank you for giving us a shot, that kind of thing. Now, again, that person is probably not going to be a piece, but the next person who sees their, you know, very intense, angry response, and then they see your well-reasoned, um, kind response back, you're going to either negate completely, or you're at least going to soften the blow of that negative review. So does that make sense? Just the next couple months, even more than usual, be checking those reviews and responding to them. Um, use your new emails. Like hopefully you've been doing some email captures this whole time. You can use those to follow up, maybe send um, a spring cleaning type of uh, themed, that's a weird theme for a sale, but you can come up with a better theme. Um, maybe you just have an after Christmas sale or, you know, help us clean out our stock or whatever it is. Um, you can use those new emails to follow up. Um, and you can use your promotion to clear some of that Christmas overstock. So say, you know, I have a bunch of children's books about a Christmas bunny or something left over. Um, I can say like 30% off and basically um, ho hopefully unload some of that stock that way. Okay, um, so that brings us to the end of our um, interesting webinar. Hopefully interesting, at least uh, there was a little glitch in the middle um, that was maybe interesting. Um, we love it when you leave us reviews. Obviously, I would love a positive review, but um, negative reviews are also um, constructive. <laughs> no, seriously, please leave us a positive review. Um, Google Plus, that really helps us a lot. Um, other than that, we are putting up new content all the time. If you're in Birmingham, Alabama, about once a month, we do a Lunch and Learn, which is a live um, training on some of this kind of thing. And we can answer questions, and you can get a free lunch, and that's really fun. Uh, we put those up as webinars later on. Um, you can always find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, and YouTube as infomedia.com, and that's spelled out. You'll see that at the bottom of your screen. And if you want to, you know, take a selfie, take a picture of your uh, notes from this webinar, or your drinking coffee, or whatever, a selfie, um, and you want to hashtag learn infomedia, that would be great. Um, I do want to thank you guys so much for being with you with me. Um, and uh, if you are, sorry. Um, if you have a retail store, um, if Christmas is in 11 months from when you watch this webinar, wonderful. There's so much you can do to get ready 
if it is a month away, you know what? There are still things you can do. So just take heart. It's going to be a great season. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. All right. Until next time.